Hi there, getting more done with less time and less effort was the topic and the content of my most recent video. I covered some pretty big brush strokes in the tools that I provided and I got thinking that you would probably like to have more detail. So in this video, I'm unpacking that last video with smaller steps to make it easier for you to implement these tools right away and to start experiencing the results from it. So first off, let's talk about your purpose and your clarity of purpose. A lot of people that I talk to and I coach companies all over the world have this lack of clarity. They think they know where they're going, but when it actually comes right down to what they're focusing on, that becomes two different things. You must have congruency, you must have an alignment, and it has to be written down and well communicated so that you and your team, no matter how small or how big, can focus on it with ease. That clarity and that purpose really needs to come from a strong foundation of your values that connect into your annual strategic plan. And then what we do is we take that and we chunk it down into achievable steps. So we've got this big goal and then we chunk it down into quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily execution. And we attach people to those steps to know that someone is on the case and it is getting fulfilled. We need to have metrics to measure that by and we need to know what the KPIs are to really truly make it stick. Otherwise, you spend a lot of your time doing busy work and in that busy work, then you start to cultivate these negative emotions and limiting beliefs that you just can't achieve what it is you want to achieve. When that happens, we start to blame it on the external world. Well, it must be the economy, or it's hard to find good people, or I just can't get this millennial generation to do the work and nobody seems to be hungry anymore and blah, blah, blah. We go on and on and on justifying our limitations instead of actually moving the needle on our business growth where we realize our greatest goals and we gain fulfillment and greater inspiration from those outcomes. So this is really the key. You have to have clarity. It's not just enough to say, I want more money or I want to achieve greater than last year or you know, we're just going to put out those, those proposals and see what happens. Or my favorite is plan for the worst and hope for the best. Hope is not a strategy. So it really does deduce down to having clarity and having that purpose behind that clarity so that you can measure your steps along the way and you can really see what's working you can cut out what's not working and you can amplify what is. So having that clarity is king. And then of course, taking that clarity and chunking it down into achievable steps so that you can see the traction and you can see the possibility and the people that are working with you and for you can actually embrace those steps. Not everyone is as big of a picture thinker as the next person. And not everyone is as detailed oriented as the next person. I always like to ask the question, would you like to see the big picture first and then we can discuss the details? Or shall I just get down to the details and the bottom line and then we can chunk it up into a bigger picture vision? Some people are threatened by a big picture. It's like, whoa, that's way too big for me. And other people are, yawn bored <laughs> by the details. They just want the big picture and they know the details will work themselves out as they go along the path and they start taking action. 
So it's really important to find these things out, get it chunked into sizes that are appropriate for you and your team, how your culture works, how your mind fires, and how people really work to their greatest performance and their greatest capacity. And then as that business leader, be willing to coach them to that. Instead of insisting that they think like you, make the effort, take the time, have the insight and the wherewithal to really understand how they think so that you can present the information at the level of which they're able and willing to receive that information so that you can get that implemented and installed into your corporate culture in a way that is effective and efficient and produces results. So there is the first step right there. You've got to have the clarity and you've got to have the purpose. Next is strategy. So strategy always has to be connected to an end goal and you must reverse engineer it. And here's why. This is how the human mind is actually structured. The human mind is actually structured in such a way that everything is reverse engineered. So when you're building out your strategy for the year, if you start with the end in mind and then you back out the steps to now, it actually flows easier and the smaller steps of the bigger picture reveal themselves quite miraculously with with ease actually besides if you knew how to get to the next level you'd already be there you wouldn't you wouldn't be struggling along you wouldn't be trying to figure it out so it's really important that you reverse engineer it and you break it down all right next state of focus this is so important that you get into your mental emotional state before you go out into the world you essentially have two choices you either get up in the morning crank on your phone check your email watch the news and look at everything else that's going out there and then decide what your day is going to be like so now you become a puppet of external situations external energies people's opinions people's points of views or you take the time and you cultivate that connection to yourself and then you have the world come to you and that's my whole point in my meditation exercise and video on doing energy pulls you actually start pulling this stuff toward you you don't have to chase anybody and you certainly don't have to chase anything when you're in alignment with that which you're asking to create then it comes to you and all you need to do then is watch for the signs take the guidance and step toward it and have it unfold so this whole part of focus is a mental state being having having an attitude that is is in alignment with your outcomes there's nothing worse than being in a meeting and we have this big goal that we want our team or our company to achieve but then you've got all the naysayers around the room that are are finding reasons why it can't happen nothing worse than that nothing worse than a buzzkill <laughs> sorry but it's true and if you have people like that on your team you really need to figure out like what's really driving their behavior this is so important to find out what those prime directives are because when it gets hard and it will get hard and I will talk about that in terms of what causes goal acquisition and achievement to become difficult when it does you have to have something to connect to on a higher level and understanding what those prime directives are is really the key to maintaining the momentum and getting back in the saddle when you feel like you've been kicked out what causes that resistance is usually looking at 
what already is and then gauging the future by what's not working now. And as you know, if you've been watching my channel, I shared that when I'm working with a client, I never focus on what's not working in that organization because that puts us more into what's not working. My approach is to have the client focus on the end goal and we build up all of the resources around that. The mental resources of attitude, of focus, of key activities, relationships with key partners, automation, making sure the strategy is mapped and communicated, making sure the values are connected and everyone is aligned with those. And then on an emotional level, being sure that there's a level of enthusiasm and inspiration and the dots are connecting. And then of course on the execution to make sure that there's an efficiency within how teams operate and how people are showing up, getting things done, measuring those KPIs and looking at the metrics and constantly tweaking it. You can never expect it to be perfect or even to be perfect for long periods of time. Everything is moving because everything is energy and it's always changing up, always. And when you can accept that, then you never get disappointed when things become a different landscape or when the market shifts or when someone isn't on board as you would like them to be. You're able to roll with that and you have a resiliency about you. And one more thing I want to cover in this video, as I'm feeling like this is going to be a little mini series and uh, I can feel an episode three, like a part three coming up on this. The next thing is to really hit the reset button. Everyone has a different capacity for how long they can focus and then they need a little bit of a break. For me, it's 90 minutes. I know I can do 90 minutes and then I need to walk away. And sometimes that's because of the people I'm working with and their energy, because I'm very sensitive, which is my gift. <laughs> it's my superpower. Um, it might actually be just staring at a computer screen. Maybe it's because I need some fresh air, I need to get out of the office and out of the recycled air. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Just know your limit and go do it. Set that alarm for yourself. Some people have shorter bursts, you know, some people are sprinters. Other people are marathoners where they can just like lock down and knock it out until it's done. We all have a different way of working. There's no right or wrong way. So please don't judge the people on your team. Understand how they work best. Understand how you work best. And then feed that and foster that and acknowledge that and build your day around that. I am super productive in the morning. And then by noon, I have got to get outside and I need to go for a walk. And I do that every day. I go for a walk appreciate nature, just enjoy the sun and the air on my skin, whatever you need to do to hit that reset button. And then my every 90 minute break is just taking a little short breather and sometimes checking in on my team, maybe having a laugh, you know, just making a, a pivot in terms of where I put my focus. So when I come back to it, I'm starting it with a fresh energy. So there you have it. There is episode two on this and I hope I've unpacked these first few pivotal steps for you. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. This is the Deborah Peters Show and I appreciate you. Take care. Have a blessed weekend. Bye.